Welcome on in guys, Tobin here with you, and thanks for checking out the channel. Hope everybody's doing fantastic out there. Uh, I wanted to do this last night. Dude, I was tired because it was a back-to-back -back night from, uh, I was I was watching, I was obviously covering the heat the night before, went to bed at like 2 in the morning after editing the recap, um, but I watched all the Cats game last night, and I'm like, oh, I gotta go talk about this, and then, you know, in the midst of watching like all the post game, I just went, oh. I just I, I I conked out, so I was uh, I I did not do this last night when I really wanted to. Um, I think you guys know on this channel I talk a lot of Panthers on the radio show, uh, but I don't do a ton on this channel. And and people have said like, hey, come on, sprinkle it in every now and then, and I think that's fair. Um, and and I think this no more appropriate time to do it than last night because Sergey Bobrovsky becomes the fastest goalie to get to 400 wins. He's the first Russian goalie to do it. Um, and the Panthers win last night, 3-1 to one at Madison Square Garden. They handed the Rangers their first loss in regulation. Um, and the Panthers, it's been such an interesting season for them to start right now because you know, it's been a little bit wonky because they've had to have time without Alexander Barkov, who obviously got hurt very early in the season. Uh, there was some some chatter that he might be back for the Finland games. The Panthers are going to go play in uh, in his home in his homeland coming on up. So I think that they are very much like slow rolling him, but also saving him for those games which are uh, next weekend. So they're finishing out this last road trip, which is a New York trip. They got the Islanders coming up on Saturday night. They have Buffalo uh, on Monday, but last night against New York, big time matchup because you have first off you have a rematch of last year. In the Eastern Conference Final, you have obviously a great goaltender matchup. It's uh, it's Bobrovsky versus Shosturkin, which is always an exciting one because Shosturkin is kind of like, you know, the the next great young Russian goalie who's coming up there, and um, and the Rangers have been not beaten in regulation so far this year. So for the Cats to come out last night. Right out of the gate, they go up two nothing on the Rangers. Anton Lindell continues his excellence this season. So it, it, it has been funny seeing with Alexander Barkov out, baby Barkov has has done a great job of holding up. That line just in itself, him, Reinhardt, and Lusterainen have been incredible for the Cats. And then, of course, you have Swaggy, Carter Verhage getting in the, uh, the net for the first time this season. Uh, been much, much anticipating Swaggy getting into uh, into the net, scoring his first goal. So he finally gets off the schneid there uh, into this game. Um, but then the story really became Sergei Bobrovsky because he he's incredible. I mean, like, I, I just watched this guy. And, you know, I, look, I'm not some hockey aficionado. You guys know that. I love my cats. They are um, – they're not – they're special teams to me not only because – uh, of them being a South Florida team, but they're also like the team my kids love. Like, you know, for anybody who's a, a dad with young kids and you always wonder like what's going to be the first thing that hooks them into sports. You know, for me, it was the 90s Marlins. For my kids, it is this era of Panthers. Like right after Roberto Luongo retires, my first game I took him to was Roberto Luongo's uh, retirement. And then my daughter didn't like Sergei Bobrovsky because she wasn't because he wasn't Roberto. And I was trying to explain to her at the time, like, "Hey, man, I, I, hey, sweetie, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm interviewing this guy like every week. He's a great guy, but obviously, he had a pretty uh, tough first season with the Cats, and and really uh, an up and down second season. Third, it settled in a little bit more. Um, I think Quinville, in a weird way, Quinville getting the hell out of here was a a big help because." It just wasn't a match. You know, those guys, you know, Quinville loved big goalies. He liked no rebounds. He didn't like the acrobatics. He liked Chris Strieger. He liked the safeness of it. And Bob is, he's hes a delight to watch because he moves all over the place, dude. He's literally like watching a gymnast between the pipes. And the thing that's crazy about it is, is like even at his age, Kachuk was talking about this last night. It's like we all watch him and we're like, we know what his age is, but he takes care of his body so much. It's such a marvel to see him go do 
what what he does and he is it's it, you know and and this is something that's funny because i you know i really got to see this firsthand in a weird way because that first season that bob was here um you know i would go to the panthers we were doing mornings so i would go and i would uh go interview bob after the show i would go to the panthers practices you know we'd pick a day every few weeks uh adeline from uh from the panthers would set it up go sit in the panthers pr office and you know, watch practice watch him do his thing and learn all his his drills him and robbie talents and how they would do things and then you know then the wait was on because you didn't know after practice it could have been you know an hour could have been 90 you know it probably depended maybe also if they had a road trip if they did not have a road trip it was going to be a while and that you, you just knew this, this and this was you know five six years ago so we're talking about a a, a, young, a bob that's essentially in his prime but the crazy thing about it is that so far this season he does not look like he's missed a beat and i just see like nobody is better at saving the puck on his butt than this guy like he does this save last night which is like the snow angel save and everybody's always panicking you know like when he doesn't have like some of the most exciting stuff is when he doesn't have his stick and the the kind of tumbling he can do around this is a man that legitimately does gymnastics like he does all types of interesting training of his body and it's so crazy because like if you if you see bob without the gear he is so slender like it's 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 like this guy is he's so rail thin um, but he's strong, you know, like he's just like, it, it, it's like he's thin, but solid. And it, it really is. He's such a, he's such an interesting athlete to cover, but also just works his ass off and to see all the good things that have happened to him in the midst of these last few seasons, um, has been awesome, you know, to really solidify, the contract that was given to him, which was a big time contract, and 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 has been described by some as an albatross for the for the cats. But now you think about he is a two time Vesna winner. He was a Vesna finalist last year, which uh, kind of ruined his celebration because they had to go out there. Um, but now he's won the Stanley Cup. He is you know they've gone to back-to-back final he's been such a huge reason for that i thought that he got screwed out of the con Smythe last year i thought it was garbage that mcdavid even i understand that he broke records but i think first of all it's horse bleep the mvp goes to a uh goes to the loser i think that's stupid but regardless and it just felt like they were just you know so obsessed with mcdavid nonstop. um but that's my bias I, I i fully admit that's my bias i'm not i'm not sitting here trying to act like it's anything else um, so whatever you want to say was like in the running for the con Smythe last year and now is a champion and now he's hitting just these incredible milestones of his career and it's just, it's awesome to see. Awesome to see great dude last night, 24 saves. He had the one, the, the, uh, the one where it was like on, he was on one side of the crease, gets the kick. Then he gets the other rebound with the skate uh incredible like the way that he was able to come through for this team and and really for this Panthers team it's been like I said an interesting season because yeah they've had you know they just got the the snot kicked out of them by the wild at home um on a on an uneven homestand for them but if you really look at the cats so far this year things that have been uh that have been noticeable is that these teams that they have been in long playoff series with, that's basically been all their wins. So if you look at the Bruins, they've taken out twice and they're completely rent-free in their head. And the funny thing is with the Northeast media is, you know, they're all asking, like, what is the secret sauce here? Like, I listen to Kachuk and I listen to these reporters um, cover the Panthers who aren't from here. You know, they're not the George Richards, the David Dworks, the Roy Bellamy's, um, the 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 Jameson Olives, all, all the, the great people who cover the sport down here. But like these these northeastern reporters are like, well, what's what, what what's going on here? Because they all feel like this original six. Um, 
I don't know what the word is. This original six, like, entitlement, I think is what I'm looking for. And they don't get it. They don't get what's going on here. Um, so for the Panthers to go out there and get wins over the Rangers, two over the Bruins, and even winning over the, the Golden Knights, who, of course, they have a, a Stanley Cup matchup with, um, it's been it's been pretty great to see. And they've obviously shown tremendous guts. Uh, I think probably at Boston was their best win because they were down Kachuk and uh, Alexander Barkov. But to be even doing this without Barkov, but they've sent messages to Boston and New York to give them their first loss in regulation and to also get these Sergei Bobrovsky uh, milestones along the way has been pretty, pretty great for the Cats. So I'm fired up about it. I'm happy for my guy, Bob. He deserves it. And uh, just, just really, really happy for him.